Um, hello guys, uh, so in this uh, lecture I want to look at the limits uh, of a function. So what do we mean by the limit of a function? I'll look at some definitions and then um, we'll look at different types of limits. Limits, one-sided limits and two-sided limits. And then uh, much later on we'll look at limit at infinity. Okay, we'll look at some limit laws that will help us to find the limit of a function. Okay, so the limits um, of a function as x approaches say a, for instance, is written as this. You see a limit as x approaches a, some number uh, of a function f of x. Um, so if this limit exists, we'll call this some l. All right? Okay, so the question is what does this really mean? I'm going to use a couple of illustrations to uh, show what the limit means. What it means is if I have a function, suppose the graph of the function x and f of x, okay, um, and then let's do something like this. Suppose that, okay, I'm going to put an open circle here. An open circle means that the function doesn't take a value there. So let a be here. And then let the value of this function here be, then this be some L. Alright? The limit as x approaches a of this function means that when x is approaching a either from the left hand side of a or the right hand side of a, the value that it takes, that is what is called the limit. Okay? So if I'm here, for instance, on the right hand side of a, uh, here, the value of the function will be what is here. If I get closer to A, the value of the limit will be here of the function. As you get closer to A, the value of this will be this. So as I get closer to A on this side, the function is getting closer and closer to the number L here. Alright? And so we'll say that the limit of this function as I approach this number from the right hand side is equal to f. Okay? And then you can imagine as I approach a from the left hand side, if I pick a number here, the value of the function will be here. If I pick a number here, the value of the function will be there. If I get closer to a here, the value of the function f of x will be somewhere there. If I get even much closer to a, the value of the function will be here. So as I approach a, I am approaching the number l, right? And so the function doesn't have to take a. In other words, f at a does not really even have to exist. Does not have to exist. Let me say f of a does not have to exist. What is important is if I approach A, if X is approaching this number here, all right, from the left hand side and from the right hand side, what value does a function take? That value that it takes is the limit of the function as X approaches A. Okay? So that is why I put this uh, open circle here to show that F of X does not take a value here. But as, as you approach this, right, the value of this function here is approaching this number L here on either side of A. All right? And so we can define limits from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side. So let me draw another picture. So if I have this, let this be uh, some function, let be uh, this, this side, okay, so I'm going to do this. This value is A. Let the value here be, I'm going to call it N. Let the number here for the function be N. This is F of X. So this is my function. Okay, on the left hand side of A, if this is a function, on the right hand side of A, the function is this guy. Okay, so the left hand side limits is the limits 
limit as x approaches a. If I'm approaching it from the left hand side, I put a negative here. That is called the left hand side limit, a one sided limit. So the limit as x approaches, approaches a from the left hand side of the function f of x. This will be equal to what? Well, from this graph, if I'm away from a on the left hand side, when I'm here, the value of the function is this, somewhere there. As I approach a, the value of the function is this. As I get closer and closer to a, the value of the function takes the number n. This is equal to n. Right? When you are here, the function is this. When you are here, it's zero. When you are x is here, you take this number. As you get closer and closer to a, f of x takes the number n. Now, if I approach a from the right hand side, which is written as the limit, as x approaches a from the right hand side of f of x, from the right hand side, if I'm somewhere here, this is x. If x is somewhere there, the, the function will take a number that is somewhere here. If I get closer to a, the function will take a value that is somewhere there. As I get closer and closer to a, the function takes the number m. And so the limit as x approaches a from the right hand side, the positive, the plus sign here means that I'm approaching it from the right hand side of this function will be equal to the number m. Okay, so this. This limit will be called the left hand, left hand limit of the function as x approaches a, and this one will be the right hand, called right hand limit. Okay, so we have the left hand and we have the right hand limit. So when we see that um, the limit of a function as x approaches some number is equal to L. What that really means is that the left hand and the right hand limits must be equal. Okay, so if the left hand limits and the right hand limits are equal, so this guy implies that the limit as x approaches a from the left hand side of the function is equal to L. And that is the same as the limit as x approaches a from the right hand side of f of x. So from the right hand side, this limit is L. And from the left hand side, the limit is also L. And so we just write limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to L. So this would be called a two sided limit. Two sided limit. Often we don't say two-sided limit, we just say the limit of the function. Unless specifically you are asked to find the left hand and the right hand limit. Usually we just find the limit of the function as x approaches some number. And if it exists, what that means is that the left hand and the right hand limits are equal. Here, the left hand and the right hand limits are not equal, right? N is not equal to N, which means that the limit as x approaches A Right? Limit as x approaches a of f of x, where f of x is this function here in the graph here. This does not exist. It does not, this one does not, does not exist because the left and the right hand limits are different. Okay? Okay, so that is a brief introduction to, uh, to, uh, to limits. I will do an example, right? classical example of the left hand and right hand limits. So let's take uh, this example and look at the left hand and right hand limits of a function. And then I'll illustrate the graph of that as well. So take a look at um, the function f of x. f of x is equal to the absolute value of x over x. Okay. What is the limit as x approaches okay, 0 from the left hand side of f of x? This is equal to what? And 
One is the limit as x approaches zero from the right hand side of f of x. This is equal to one. Well, you can actually compute the numbers, right? You can use the um, the um, explanation I just gave and put in numbers that are close to zero from the left hand side, right? And then you can do the same thing for zero from the right hand side. If they are approaching the same number, then you can say that the limit of this function is equal to that number. Otherwise, the limit does not exist. Okay? So you can take x. So suppose that I want to find the left, the limit as x approaches zero from the left hand side of the function f of x. Alright? So we we'll take some values of x and then we compute absolute value of x over x. This is our f of x. Alright? So we are we want to approach zero from the left and from the right. Over here will be one, over here will be negative one. So you can take numbers negative two all the way. So for the left hand, we are between the left hand limit. You can take numbers that are to the left hand side of zero. So if I take negative two for instance, and I plug it, okay, I'll go in further. Let's take negative four. If I put it in here, I'll have negative four over negative four, right? This will give me one. The absolute value of negative four is four, positive four, right? be positive 4 over negative 4, that will be negative 1. If I come closer to uh, 0, let me take negative 3, I'm going to have absolute value of negative 3 over negative 3, that will be 3 over negative 3, which is also negative 1. If I do that, let's get closer, let's take negative 1, absolute value of negative 1 over negative 1 will also be 1 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. If it can get a little closer to 0, take negative 0 0.2 or 1, negative 0 0.1. You will have absolute value of negative 0 0.1 over negative 0 0.1. You are going to have negative, you are going to have 0 0.1 over negative 0 0.1, which is also negative 1. Alright? So it means that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left hand side of this function f of x, which is the absolute value of x over x, is actually negative 1. Alright? Okay, what happens if you approach it from the right, if you approach 0 from the right hand side? If you approach 0 from the right hand side, you can take numbers to the right. Okay? So you want to do limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side of f of x. Yes. So take x. Well, from the right hand side, we can start from maybe 5 or 4, and then come to 3 and 2. Want to approach? Yes, 0 0.5. So you can approach it from this side. So if I take, remember it is x over absolute value of x. If I take 4, Absolute value of 4 over 4, the value I get here will be 1, right? This will be 4 over 4. If I take 2, I have absolute value of 2 over 2, which is also 1. If I take 1, absolute value of 1 over 1, this is 1. You can take a number that is really, really close to 0. Let's take 0 0.01. You have absolute value of 0 0.01 all over 0 0.01. That is also 1. Alright? So, it means that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side of my function f of x is equal to 1. Okay? So, you see that the left hand limit, which is negative 1, and the right hand limit, which is 1, are not equal. And so, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist, does not exist, okay? 
and you can actually plot this function and you will see why it does not exist, right? So let me just do that and then bring this to an end. So on the, um, if you remember absolute values, right? We looked at absolute value equations, absolute value inequalities and stuff. We know that the absolute value of x means that this is x whenever x is greater or equal to zero, and it is negative x whenever x is less than zero. All right? So to define this function, this function is the absolute value of x all over x. So I'm going to take this guy and then divide by x. If I take x over x, I'm going to have one whenever x is greater than zero, right? If I take negative x over x, I'm going to have negative one whenever x is less than zero. So if you sketch this function, it's going to look like this, right? <clears throat> this is f of x. That is absolute value of x over x. Zero. On the right-hand side of zero, the function is a constant, it's one. So here it's going to be one whenever x is positive. And whenever x is negative, it is, it is taking the value negative one. So f will be negative one whenever x is on this side. All right? So you see that the limit as you approach zero from the right-hand side the, is always one, as we found. And as you approach zero from the right-hand side, the function takes this number negative one. Okay, good. So I'll end here for now. Uh, I'll come back and we'll look at some more uh, examples of two-sided limits and then some laws of limits. All right.